So in this video, we're going to be looking at graphing the solutions of equations and using these graphs to help us work out what these solutions are and where they appear. So they're going to help us give us some intuition behind solving the algebraic problem. So first off, I've written two equations down here. We've got a quadratic, x times x minus 3, and a uh, cubic, so x squared times 1 minus x. And the first step is just going to be sketching each function. So we've got the x-axis here and the y-axis here. So for the quadratic, we have roots at 0 and 3. So it crosses the x-axis at x equals 0 and x equals to 3. And we have a positive parabola, so it's going to be upwards curving. So it's going to look something like this, coming down, turning around, and then going back up. So that is what y1 looks like. OK, so next we want to sketch this cubic equation right here. And first off, we need to observe the roots. So that's just when x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. So I'm just going to draw on a number 1 here. And then we also need to note that we have a negative x term in here. So if we were to expand everything out, we would get a negative x cubed term, which means that the, uh, the cubic is kind of going to be upside down. It's going to start in the top left corner and end in the bottom right corner. And also because the x cubed term it's grows faster than the x squared term, it's going to go up to infinity faster than the x than the quadratic is going to. So we're going to get something looking a bit like this. It's going to come down very steeply. It's going to cross the quadratic at some point. And because x squared is a repeated root, it's just going to bounce off the x uh, axis. It's going to come back up, then cross x is equal to 1, and then 10 to negative infinity. It's not a very good sketch, to be honest, but you get to see where the graphs uh, intersect, and that's what we're interested in. So we have one uh, place of intersection here. I'll label this A. Another one here at the origin. Let's label that B. And a third one here down in the bottom right corner. I'll label that C. So from this diagram, we expect to see three solutions to uh, these equations and we can kind of think about which order they come in just by looking at the sketch. So to find where these two curves intersect, we are essentially just going to set them equal to each other. So by that I just mean set uh, y1 equal to y2. And if we do that in terms of x's, we get x times x minus 3 equals x squared times 1 minus x. And now we've just got an equation in terms of x's and we want to rearrange, simplify, and solve this uh, to find the values of x that satisfy this equation. And like I was saying before, we expect to see three points of intersection. So let's expand the brackets out first. We get x squared minus 3x. And on the right-hand side, we're going to get x squared minus x cubed. So you can see that the x squared terms are just going to cancel out. And then now let's move over the x cubed term on the left-hand side, and we'll get x cubed minus 3x is equal to 0. So this is a cubic equation, and you wouldn't normally be able to solve it uh, just by hand, but we can see that both terms here have an x in them. So we can just factorize that out, and this is going to make it a lot easier. We'll have x on the outside times x squared minus 3. And now we can solve this, and we do it by just setting each bracket equal to 0, each term here. And then we see that the solutions are going to be x is equal to 0, and the solutions here is x equals to the square root of 3. When you square this, you get 3, and also x equals minus the square root of 3, because when you square this, you also get 3. So that's looking very good. We've got three solutions, but we also want to know what values of y um, correspond to these x values. And they should be the same, because we've set y1 equal to y2. So to do this, we're just going to substitute into either one of the equations. It doesn't matter. Um, we'll probably do y1, because it's simpler. It's got less x terms in. Um, so let's go up here, and we're going to Substitute each one in, one at a time. So if we substitute x equals 0 into here, we're just going to get y is equal to 0, uh, because 0 times minus 3 is still 0. Now if you substitute square root of 3, we're going to get something that doesn't look very nice. Um, and we're not too worried about uh, simplifying, but we're just going to get square root of 3 times the square root of 3 minus 3. And secondly, if we put x equals minus the square root of 3 in here, we'll get y equals uh, minus the square root of 3 times minus the square root of 3 minus 3. And we can actually just get rid of the minus signs. That we can distribute and they'll cancel. So we just get square root of 3 of square root of 3 plus 3. 
All right, so these are our three solutions. It's a bit messy, so I'm just gonna rub it out and write it out again, just so we can see it better. All right, so the values of x that we found that satisfy this equation are x equals zero, square root of three, and minus the square root of three. And the corresponding y values are y equals zero, y equals root three times root three minus three, and also root three times root three plus three. So now we can kind of think of what these mean in terms of coordinates and where they're going to appear on this diagram, what we expect A, B, and C to be in terms of these solutions here. So we can write these in coordinate form, and if we do that, we'll have zero, zero as being one solution. We'll have square root of three and root three times root three minus three as another solution. And then we're also going to have minus root three times root three times root three plus three. Lots of root three, sorry. Okay, so now if you think about what these values actually correspond to on the graph, first off you can see that zero, zero, that's just the origin, so that's just gonna be b. So I'm just gonna write b equals this coordinate here, so that's our first solution. And then we need to work out which of these two is a and c. So we can do that quite simply just by looking at the x value. So c's got a positive x value and a's got a negative x value. So here we have plus root three and here we have minus root three. So these should correspond to C equals this stuff and um, A equals to this stuff. So hopefully you see now the advantage of sketching these uh, functions uh, beforehand, before doing all the algebra, and this can kind of help you get some intuition and also double check that your answers are right. So this is the first example we're doing. We're also gonna do one more example. I'll just rub this out to give us some more space. Okay, for our second example, we're going to do y1 equals x squared, so just the simplest quadratic there is, and also y2 equals minus 27 over x. So this is a type of reciprocal function. So first off, we want to see what these look like. So let's sketch these on the xy plane, x here and y here. So y1 is gonna be very simple. This is just gonna be the simplest parabola that comes in and touches x equals zero and then goes back up. Should be symmetric, I'm not very good at sketching. And then for this function here, this is the uh, reciprocal function, but with a negative in front. So normally if there wasn't a negative, it would just go up here in the first top right quadrant and the bottom left quadrant. But because there's a negative, we have to flip it and we actually have um, the, res uh, the reciprocal function looking like this. It goes up like that. So let me just label this as y1 and y2. And now we see that these functions only intersect in one place. This is our only point of intersection. I'm just gonna label this A. So hopefully, um, from just looking at the graph, we expect to see one solution. And we're just gonna try and find out what that is now algebraically. So we do this by setting y1 equals to y2. Um, in terms of x, this just corresponds to being x squared equals minus 27 over x. And then we can just multiply by x on the bottom and we get x cubed equals minus 27. So now we've got a cubic equation and it doesn't really look that easy to solve. We don't really know any standard uh, techniques to solve a cubic. So our approach now is just gonna be sub in some values and hope for the best. <laughs> Let's see if we can find the solution just by, it. so if we look at the graph, we know it's gonna be negative. And then we need a, cu a number cubed that gives us minus 27. Now we know that three cubed equals 27. So how about we try minus three cubed? And this is gonna give us minus three times nine, that's three, minus three squared, and this is actually minus 27. So just by inspection, um, we have found that x equals minus three is the point of intersection. This is the x coordinate. Normally you'd be able to solve this through more standard techniques, but for this case, we've just spotted the solution. And now the second step is to work out the corresponding y value. So we want to know uh, what value of y is, uh, satisfies uh, x equals minus three. And it should be the same for both of these uh, functions uh, because we've set y1 equals to y2. So it doesn't matter which one you choose, you can do either one. We're gonna do y1 because this is gonna be simpler. And if we put x equals minus three straight in here, we see that we get y is equal to nine. 
So this is the single coordinate. So we can write a is equal to minus three times nine. This is a single place where these two uh, graphs intersect. So this is our solution right here. And I just want to point out why sketching is so powerful because by sketching, we have concluded that there's only one solution. And we've given, been given this uh, pretty nasty looking cubic equation. And if you didn't know um, what, how many solutions there were, you might think maybe there's two solutions, maybe there's three solutions. But because we know there's only one, we've kind of uh, deduced that we can kind of uh, guess which one it is and we actually found it out. And now just uh, by guessing, we know that there aren't any more solutions from the graphical method. So it's really important to sketch and hopefully you see why.